Hello guys, uh, welcome back to Maison African Motives, still on engineering science and one uh, revisions. Uh, so in this platform, we shall be focusing on electricity uh, from the question paper of November 2022. So we shall just quickly rush through the questions that we had, uh, which is under electricity. All right, so we are given on 10.1 of the paper, uh, that is 10.1, identify each of the following IEC circuit symbols. Okay, so we've got 10.11. Okay, what is the symbol for this? So this is a cell, all right, which is uh, taken uh, if you combine these ones to formulate a battery and so on. Okay, 10.12, what is the symbol for this one, guys? This is a pure resistor that we have. So this is a resistor, all right? Then the V, if it is given in this case, that represents what? A voltmeter. If it is A inside, if there is an A, that is an ammeter, okay? So please uh, be very careful with these symbols that you'll be given. All right. On 10.2, we are now given a circuit of resistors which are connected in parallel over a 12 volt power supply. 10.21, calculate the total resistance of the cell of the circuit, and that is two marks. So remember, these are connected in parallel, and we know that in parallel, in a parallel connection, uh, the equivalent for the total resistance is given by this formula. All right, so this is question 10.21. Uh, so we are going to use one over RT. This is given also in your formula sheet. So you add the resistors as one over the first resistor, one over the second resistor, plus one over, there were three resistors there. All right, so that's one over RT is equal to one over uh, R1. So remember on your diagram here, R1 is 16. So that's one over 16. So we're going to have one over 16 plus one over the second resistor that is 24 followed by 36. So we're going to have 24, another one is at 36, okay. So one over the total resistance is equal to. So on your calculator, uh, please make sure that you indicate on your calculator properly. So let me just show the whole of the screen like this one. All right, so let's see our calculator here. All right, this is our calculator. All right, so I'm just going to uh, add these ones. That's one over uh, 16. So you put one over 16 plus one over 24 plus one over 36, like this, all right. So if you add, you are going to obtain, uh, that's nine, 19 over 144. Okay, so you put 19 over 144. So for you to find RT in this case, it's simply the inverse, okay? For you to have RT, it was simply the inverse, like to say this one, you just say one over this, you have got RT. So one over a fraction of R, one of RT gives us RT, which is equal to, on the same side here, you just divide this like one, one divided by this fraction. So it simply means on your calculator, you are going to have one divided by the answer that we had before. So you're going to obtain 144 over, over 19, of which as a decimal, this is going to be, okay, that's uh, seven comma, five, seven, eight, nine, and so on, okay? So this nine can change this eight into nine. So it is going to be seven comma five, seven, nine. Okay, so that's seven comma five, uh, seven, nine. All right, so remember, this is total resistance and resistance is measured in ohms. Okay, so that was the question uh, on question uh, 10.21. 10.22, we are now given to calculate the total current. So take note, we've got a to total voltage in this case. And we know that if we are given the total resistance and the total volt and the total voltage, we can calculate uh, the total current in this case. Remember, voltage is equivalent to current times resistance. So current simply divide by the resistance by the resistance. So that means the total current is given by the total voltage over the total resistance. So that means our total current uh, from the circuit, our total voltage 
was at uh, 12 volts. So this is what we have at the supply. Vt is 12 volts. So we are going to divide that 12, divide by the total resistance. And our resistance is 7,579. Okay, so that's you guys and your calculator. Make sure that you divide properly uh, these values. So that's 12 divide by 7, comma, uh, 579. All right, so you're going to obtain 1,5833, which is 1,5833. That three cannot change. And this is current, which is measured in amps. All right, so take note of the units of measurement, guys. Be very, very careful. All right, uh, let's check the other part of the question. Uh, we are now given 10.3. What will happen to the resistance if each of the following materials, uh, okay, of the following materials, if we are given the temperature is reduced, okay, if you reduce temperature, what happens if you are dealing with insulators like PVC? What will happen, guys? So here it opposes. The moment temperature reduces, it means the resistance is going to increase, okay? So here, resistance increases. Remember, insulators, they oppose. So resistance increases, okay? So resistance increases, all right? Then alloys like uh, Berlin silver, if you're dealing with this one, what happens? It actually goes in the direction. So this one, it means there is no change, okay? So no change is going to, to happen. All right, 10.4. List three factors that determine the resistance of a material. Okay, for you to know the factors that determine the resistance of a material, you must know this formula that resistance is equivalent to the resistivity times length over area. That's rho L over A. So these can tell us, uh, give us what we need, the factors which determine. We are talking of what? The resistivity, that is the type of material, okay? So the resistivity, that's the type of material. So if for type of material, L for the length. So if for the length of the conductor, uh, that is the material that you're given. So you're given length of what? Length of conductor, all right? Then we have got A for the area. So this is the cross-sectional area. So we've got the cross-sectional area. All right, so these are the three most important factors. But of these factors, remember, if you are dealing with resistance, we can also have an effect with temperature. Take note about this one. We said what will happen to the resistance when there is a change, in which means temperature also affects the resistance of a material. So we can have temperature also here. But this temperature, these are just ambient physical factors, okay, such as temperature. So we put also temperature as part of this. We are going to choose any three from this, but the best that you're supposed to have are these three, okay? Temperature is just another factor, uh, but you're supposed to indicate it. If you are out of points, then please use that one. Okay, then on 10.5, a steel ion is connected to a 220 volt supply and we are given a current of 12 amps is flowing through the ion. Uh, calculate the amount of energy, heat energy, okay, generated in six minutes, okay? So take note the formula for energy, guys. We are given this, that Q is equivalent to power times time. So this is 10.5 Q, that is equivalent to power times time. And this time is supposed to be in seconds, all right? So in this case, we can see that we do not have power, but we have got voltage and current. So remember the product of voltage and current gives us power. So it is going to be voltage times current times the time we can have our uh, energy in this case. So we can multiply this, um, the voltage of 220 volts times the current, our current is 12 amps times the time. So the time in seconds, this is minutes. So remember, in a minute, we have got uh, 60 seconds. So we multiply this by 60. So it is going to be, it is going to be six times 60 like this. So this is in seconds. All right. 
So if you do this, guys, if you multiply uh, properly, we are going to have our energy in this case, all right? So uh, on our calculator, we must obtain something like 950,100, okay? So that's 950, 400, zero, zero. okay? So this is our energy, which is measured in joules, okay? So to convert to kilojoules, you divide by 1,000. So if you divide by 1,000, it is going to be 950,4, which is in kilojoules. That is if you want to convert to kilojoules, but there you are not told. So you just uh, live in the unit, the, the units that you want, okay? On 10.6, we are now given to draw a neat labeled sketch of a magnetic field around a current carrying conductor. So this is a sketch, okay? So I'm going to show you the sketch that I have here. So this is best sketch that we can just have. Uh, okay, this one here, I hope it's clear. So this is what we are going to have uh, with the current flow and three marks for that. So as you can see, guys, uh, this diagram, please make sure that you revise it, uh, work with your diagrams, know each and every day. Okay, so that's what we had on the magnetic field around a current carrying uh, conductor. 10.7, we are given the following is printed on an electrical kettle. So we are given the information which is printed, as you can see, if you buy, any electronic device, you'll be given this information, the rating, the power rating, and the voltage, even the current, sometimes the current drawn. But here we are just given the uh, power, which is measured in watts and the voltage. So the question is, calculate the current, okay? So remember, guys, I talked about this previously, that power is voltage times current. So you are given power in this case, so you can play around with this formula. Okay, so that's 10.7. Remember that power is voltage times current. So to find the current, simply divide by voltage both sides. So that means current is equivalent to power over the voltage. So the power is 1,200. So we've got 1,200 watts over the voltage, which is 230 volts. Okay, so if you divide properly, guys, you are going to obtain uh, an endless decimal which is going to be 5,21 and so forth. So if you run off, you're going to obtain 5,217. Okay, so this is current, which is measured in what? In amps. So take note on the units there. This is current, it's measured in amps. All right, so the last part of the question that was present 10.8, where we are given in this case to give one practical example, so one practical application for an electromagnet. Okay, if you are dealing with an electromagnet, what can be the applications, the practical application? So you can use this uh, if you're dealing with relays, okay? So we can have this on relays. Uh, we can have this on a motor. So it can be an electrical motor, okay? An electrical motor. Uh, there are so many examples that you can use. Also, uh, we can use this if you are dealing with an uh, electrical bell, okay? An electrical bell. So what I want you guys, uh, I want you to research more uh, examples that you can have, more practical examples for, electro, uh, for an electromagnetic so that we can revise as much as we can. On the comment section, let me know the ones that you have managed to find. It can help another one uh to, to 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 revise on those uh ones that you have listed for us okay so that's what you had guys from this um paper november 2022 working on uh, electricity uh from Amazon african motives till we meet again